All right, let's talk about back pain. In 2012, I injured my back and my neck working, and it was terrible. I had trouble using my legs. I had trouble feeling things. I had trouble maintaining my grip. I had trouble holding a guitar. I had trouble doing a lot of things I used to do. Uh, throughout that, I uh, apparently have developed psoriasis and I had no idea what it was. It was a little red rash on my leg and then all of a sudden that blew up all over me and I had to deal with that on top of everything else. But you know, uh, I was taught to stay strong so I kept trying to do the best I could to be optimistic about it. Um, there was a lot that occurred in my life that made my uh, treatments and my uh, physical therapy attendance uh, uh, difficult. So I was able to borrow a vehicle and attend some treatments and some physical therapy one day and returning back, uh, I was involved in a car accident or a car crash or whatever the hell you call them these days. And uh, that put me in an ambulance and ended me up in the hospital and uh, of course, uh, you know, when I got out of there, uh, I still had terrible pain that comes and goes and uh, I still do to this day. And, uh, you know, I didn't uh, have an opportunity or an ability to get back to my doctor in Boston right away. So now I have to deal with that. And I can't include this stuff on YouTube, but I'm going to talk out loud about it to myself. Because I am living this. And I remember when I was a kid, I wished I could afford a video camcorder, which was a $1,000. And I... Uh, couldn't afford one then. It felt like uh, many opportunities for me were out of reach. Uh, and now, here, even though it's uh, a laggy video quality, I mean, that's not very good. I don't even think I can put this on YouTube and <laughs> use this in any way, but maybe you are supposed to go and try uh, to set things up so you can take part in what's going on because uh, the things that you've had to endure through physical labor and construction is too cutthroat it's deadly you put your life on the line and a lot of people they just don't want you to take their job even if you express friendliness and a good attitude and talk team ethics people still don't trust you and uh, it's just uh, something that was a disappointing experience so I want to move on um, to something where I can potentially you know make some money I don't expect to be uh, financially independent from doing this uh, but I need to try something new somewhere. Um, this is one of the avenues I have chosen. And uh, I, I don't know. I wonder. I mean, I guess I could edit this out later. So I'm going to edit this a bit. So I guess I can just keep talking. Um, and I could come up with something later on. I mean, I'd love to do some video game Let's Plays. I used to play video games as a kid. And, you know, I loved playing games, and I loved the challenges of them all, and, uh, you know, kids in the neighborhood uh, used to come by my house and ask me to, you know, beat stages and games and, you know, the silly things like that. Um, you know, I don't want to go get too into it, because I remember I wanted to go to camp as a kid, but that was expensive. I mean, video games are expensive too, but, you know, I got a Nintendo. I didn't get to go and tie knots and, you know, fall down, and, you know, like other kids, you know, uh, whatever, you know, in the outdoors. Uh, that's just the way it turned out for me. Um, but at some point in life, I realized, probably in my teen years, that I was playing a lot of freaking video games. I mean, I got out. I was in bands for a long time uh, that didn't really go anywhere, or else I wouldn't be here right now, I guess. <laughs> um, but, uh... I uh, was able to get out there and do what I could do um, and you know I, I quit the games for a while I mean well if I were to go into it I mean I, you know I 
guess I can say it now. I, you know, Nintendo is what I started with. Um, and there were other consoles that came later, you know, the Super Nintendo, or, you know, there was Sega I had for a while. And the PlayStation 1 was the last, like the first PlayStation was the last console I ever owned. And, you know, I don't know how other people would feel about that, but it's just uh, around the time the PlayStation came out, I, uh, we got our first family computer and it wasn't the first time I had experience with computers when I was maybe I don't know eight or nine years old I had a friend who moved into the neighborhood I, you know I ended up befriending this kid um, who was uh, from Arkansas hope he's doing all right wherever he is right now but this kid uh, you know he was looking to make friends and I uh, ended up hanging out with them and one day I went by his place and it turned out that uh, his landlord was a mad scientist or something. I mean, I saw the guy and he definitely had the hair. Uh, but it turned out he was more of a tech geek. Maybe he was also a mad scientist, I don't know. But he had uh, a lot of cool technical gadgets in his apartment. Uh, he invited us in once and told us to watch our step because there were cables uh, all along the floor and all sorts of neat little doodads and thingamajigs and stuff. So, um, I was fascinated by it because when I, gee, it's hard for me to stay focused on a story. I feel like I'm always going off on track. But to make a long story short, my birth father was, uh, uh, I'm big into electronics and when I was a kid he had an oscilloscope and all sorts of electrical things and you know guitars and amps he was building and stuff he never finished but that was when I was a kid so I was always fascinated by you know electronics and technology um, so this guy um, my friend's landlord realized that I was fascinated by it and I mentioned how I always wanted a computer and he he opened he had a closet he opened up and he had maybe piles of computers in there like from what I remember and he just picked one up and said this is a 486 and it's got Windows 3.11 on it and if you like you can borrow it and you can do whatever you want with this machine and I said whatever I want He's like, well, yeah, it's just one of my spare machines. Um, you know, don't do anything that'll get you in trouble. But uh, here you are. If you want to play with it, go ahead. Take it home. Uh, so that was a lot of um, excitement for me. I mean, I was psyched about that. I mean, I remember looking at it and seeing how the hardware worked uh, and being fascinated by that. But before I got into the hardware side of things, I just wanted to turn it on and see what I could make it do, and what I could do with it. Um, and I think I want to say this is maybe in 96 or 97 this happened. So the internet was just taking off. And I only had a couple friends who, you know, had a computer with the dial up and the and AOL and all that. And uh, I um, remember. A game on there. I can't remember what it's called right now, but there were two gorillas on either side of a city, and you had to put in launch coordinates, and you had to hit the other gorilla with an exploding banana, and it was a lot of fun for a while. <laughs> and uh, the other thing that we had on there was Doom, and uh, I won't get into how addicted I got into Doom right now, but that was another game that I played. And uh, then there was also World of Warcraft, which uh, I played for the longest time. I got addicted to that. Um, but, you know, I, I did grind sessions. You know, I could play a game for three, four days straight and then be done with it and go do something else. You know, like, but I was determined to uh, be victorious <laughs> in my campaigns in these gaming sessions. Oh, and there we go, my settings just went into sleep mode. Alright, so I can edit this terrible quality video later anyway. Um, oh, we all have to start somewhere, don't we? Uh, 
so where was I? Um, so I got my first computer, um, and I loved uh, having that technology. Uh, I remember playing around with Windows and uh, learning a little bit about DOS and batch files and certain type of UIs on Windows 3.1 uh, that they were programs that launched with screensavers and there was some other stuff I was learning about that turned out to uh, be um, I, well, I don't know I guess I could say they were viruses I didn't know what I was doing I mean I remember by the end of it uh, I think I actually somehow downloaded something that infected by the computer I borrowed from this guy uh, and I was bummed about that but um I remember bringing it back to him and telling him what happened you know I downloaded something and now you know the last thing I remember is Windows 3.1 had this little UFO flying around the screen zapping things and Windows 3.11 I think and uh, I, I just couldn't uh, boot it up anymore without the blue screen of death so I brought it back to the guy and he just said okay don't worry about it I'll figure out what you did and I can fix it and, uh, all right, you know, you'll have to let me know what happens someday. And it turned out there was some little virus thing. I mean, I, I, I ended up downloaded somehow, and he told me to be careful where I went. But it is interesting, the Internet. And that was mid-90s, uh, mid to late-90s. So um, that's uh, where I started with computers. And, you know, I realized then how much they could do, and I was fascinated by them. And I was starting to uh, be distracted by the thought of what computers can do over what, you know, my gaming consoles were just gaming consoles. I realized computers help you multitask, especially if you're the type that likes to try and do several different things at once and then go back and assess how accurately you could maintain several things at once. So, um, anyway, fast forwarding, uh, around uh, 2000, 2001, you know, my family decided to finally get their own home computer. And I was excited about it. And um, that's when I started... Um, really researching things about uh, you know computer code you know I, I started well delving into how electrical signals that go into this machine are um, triggering functions and spitting out information in an organized fashion like neat how do you do that um, so um, I remember uh, learning a little bit about binary, uh, how to do the math to uh, turn binary into uh, a language like hexadecimal, for example. And I, I believe from there that's how different shells were made or other programming. I mean, I, I need to go back and look at terminology so I don't um, use the wrong words, nomenclature. <laughs> uh, but it was uh, exciting stuff to me, and oh, on top of it all, I ended up learning uh, about online gaming. There was uh, a neighbor of mine who had D&D uh, &D sessions, and that was a lot of fun. I never played D&D &D before, so I went over there, and, uh, you know, she ordered some drinks and some pizzas, and, you know, we, uh, <laughs> just... I, I, you know, I, I learned how it worked, the dungeon master telling a story, and how you have to make decisions on what you do, and how you have to help the party, or, you know, someone in the party was just, I don't know, it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun with all the different personalities, and, but she mentioned at some point that, uh, if we don't get together, there's always this game EverQuest, and, you know, I thought to myself, well, the last thing I really want to do is put another game in my life, and, um... But, since I was a kid, I always accepted the challenge that video games brought, especially the originals. I mean, I remember sitting down with my dad, and, you know, there were games we used to play that had 
difficulty options and used to tell me always go for hard mode because once you can beat things in hard mode you know everything else is just a cakewalk so you know train hard through video games though yeah, however that works so um, I got this EverQuest game and I remember looking at the box before I purchased it and reading it massively multiplayer online like you know, it was always cool sitting on the couch with, you know, one other friend in two-player mode. And then if you were, like, super lucky, you had that four-way adapter thingy. And then, like, you know, four of you could, like, hang out and play a game. But an MMO? What the heck? Okay. Why not? I'll just play it for a little bit, you know, see what it's like. And um, So I think I played that game for maybe two months straight. And it was around maybe the end of its great um, cycle, I could say, when, you know, before World of Warcraft came out. This game had a huge population. And it had a lot of uh, really friendly, helpful people that you almost don't even run into in games anymore. Um, like if you started a game right at the beginning area there would sometimes just be lots of other players that have played for a long time uh, just in the area offering you help or offering you just quests like here take this and bring this to my friend and I'll give you this you know it's like what a great way to start the game you know like I, I had a lot of fun and I, I got I got kind of hooked on that game for a while and uh, I uh, understood what grinding was for the first time through EverQuest because of how much of it you would have to do. Um, it wasn't hard to find a group, but soloing in a game then took skill. And people used to tell me in the game that if you can't find a group or if the group is full, go try to solo. Because if you can solo you may be able to pull things off while you're in the group that you did not have to face because you're always in the group getting easy mode but if you know how to solo you were more prepared for situations where you know you were suddenly at that threshold of like two percent health and you know it was either stun you know or run for it or probably both or you know run around like down a potion or you know bandage yourself while you're limping <laughs> it was you know then that was the great thing about the game too because there was a lot of word text so it would leave it up to your imagination instead of putting so much into graphics you know a lot was left up to the imagination um but yeah I won't go too much more into that right now the second game uh, that I got into was Quake. I saw Quake 3 Arena. Competitive online first person shooter. And I thought, well shit, maybe I'd be good at this. Taking all my uh, game knowledge that I supposedly had. God, my teeth need to be fixed. Alright, I gotta edit that out later. Um, so anyway. Um, I ended up playing Quake 3 and we had a cable connection at the time and I remember pinging 5 to like every server and it was just cakewalk for everything in there for a long time and uh, I played that game for a couple of months maybe and uh, you know it's funny to this day I remember thinking to myself video games are just video games you can't make money playing video games need to quit this and get a job so you can find some girl and take her on a date and get a life <laughs> so that's what I did I quit playing games for a long time and tried a bunch of things that haven't worked and have led me to now which uh, may be a lot of experience but also a lot of uh, 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 other things I'm going through. So, 
I don't know. This was my first video I've ever actually got to really speak about myself, and I wonder if I'll even get around to listening to it later. I doubt this is YouTube quality, but everyone has to start somewhere. And, uh... Here's to make it a new shift in life. Okay, um... I'm not calling myself Crazy Eyes. Crazy Eyes. My, um... A roommate I had uh, would tell me that when I played Quake, especially, um, that it gave me crazy eyes. And she would say to me, oh, you must be playing that game again because you've got the crazy eyes. And so I, you know, went with the name Crazy Eyes for a start, I guess. I don't know what else to call myself. I don't know. There's lots of crazy things. I, I once knew a, ga a guy named Chainsaw, so, I'm, but I'm not going to do that. I'll figure out an alias later. Uh, you know, it is what it is. So, alias over and out.